In this video, we're going to take a look at an online presentation tool called eMaze. And eMaze is one of a select group of kind of new online tools for creating presentations. And a lot of people think of these as the next generation of presentations. After years of dominance by PowerPoint and Keynote and similar presentation tools, eMaze, along with Prezi, Google Slides maybe, and other presentation tools like Nearpod. These are some of the new generation of presentation tools. And I hope that you'll watch some of my tutorials about those other tools, Prezi, Nearpod, etc. But let's take a look right now at eMaze and see what it can do. Here at eMaze.com, you can register for a free account. Once you are registered and you sign in, you'll probably get a pop-up similar to this that gives you the option of a 14-day free trial, or you can sign up right away for the pro account, or you can get a business account, and you can see the costs involved there. But there's two other options that are kind of minimized, kind of small, but they're good options. One is to continue using eMaze just as a free user. You're going to miss out on a few of the premium options, but honestly, you can use eMaze very successfully just as a free user. For those of you that are teachers or students, notice that there's a link where you can click here and you can get an EDU plan, and it has some instructions for how to do that, and that gives you some bonus features that the regular free account doesn't have. But for today, I'm just gonna show you a few things you can do with the free user account. So I'll X out of this, and I'm gonna create a new presentation by clicking this button here. Now, the real amazing thing about eMaze is these templates, and that's the first thing I need to do as I create a new eMaze is choose a template. Now, the reason I say these are an amazing part of eMaze and the exciting part of eMaze is each of these templates gives you some interesting visual hook or visual feature that will grab your audience's attention, will grab your students' attention, whoever's watching this presentation. Now, to get a sense of these different templates, you can just put your mouse on top of the template and you'll see it in action. Okay, so here's one called Gallery, and you put your mouse on it and it gives you a preview of what the presentation is going to look like. So you put your content on the walls of this gallery, basically, and then it browses through from painting to painting or from content to content. Whatever you put on those walls, that will become your presentation, but it's part of this virtual art gallery. Okay, so that one's pretty cool. Here's one called Roadmap, and you can see it looks like a video of a person traveling down the road in a car, but it pauses every so often to present your content. Here's one called Online Learning, and you can see it looks like an old-fashioned movie. Your content is presented there as part of this old-fashioned movie. Here's one called Limitless, and this has kind of a 3D effect. Once again, your content is presented as part of this animated world in this case. You can see there's newspapers, there's space, and uh, you know each of these is kind of unique in a way. Here's one that almost looks like a Prezi. Okay, this is chalkboard. And it basically looks and works like a Prezi, except it's a Prezi with a chalkboard in the background. And there's so many more that we could look at to get a sense of what's possible with eMaze. Let's just take a quick look at this one called Halloween. You can see you put your mouse on that and you get animated bats. You get some spooky trees and ghosts and things like that. And um, other than eMaze, I don't know of a way to create a presentation like this with animated content all around. You know, Prezi does some kinds of animation, but not to this extent. And so if you really want something flashy and unique to kind of grab your audience's attention as they look at your content, I think eMaze is a really good option. All right. For this example in this video, what I'd like to choose is the template called Hand Delivery. It's this one here. So I'll click on that. It gives me a little description and I can choose my color scheme. Do I want it to be orange? Do I want it to be blue? In this case, I'm gonna go with orange. And then I just click Choose and it takes me to my newly chosen template. I can get in now and change the content, put my own information, my own content into this eMaze presentation. Now, similar to PowerPoint, eMaze uses what looks like slides. So here at the left, I have a list of my slides, but the presentation isn't always experienced as a series of slides. It, sometimes it looks more like a movie or an animation or something like that. 
or like a Prezi with a large canvas that's moved around on. But as you're building your emails, you're basically thinking of it as a series of slides. So here's slide one. I can add another slide here. I can add a section of slides here, and I can go back to a theme option here. This just lets me switch the colors of my theme. There's really not the option at this point of going back and choosing a different theme. Okay, but before I create another slide, let's edit the slide I'm on right now. So let's say I want to create an emails that reviews the parts of speech. Notice that there's some default text here for the title, and I just triple clicked on it to highlight that text, and I'm going to change it to the parts of speech. Underneath where it says 2013, I'll just triple click on that and then type in a review. Obviously the text didn't quite fit in the space provided, but I can just click and drag on this text box to make it fit the space that I wanted it to go to. Okay, and you can adjust that as you need to. Now anytime you're editing text in emails, you can highlight the text and you'll see you do get some text options here at the top. You can change the type of text that it is, from title to just regular text, or to subtitle. You can change the font size. You can text align left, you can center it, right align left, text align right, um, bold, all of these different options that you have. Now, one of those options that I should point out is this one, hyperlink. So you click on that, whatever text you have highlighted can become a link to an external website or to another slide in your email slideshow or to a specific object. Okay, and you would just click here for a drop down list of the objects that you have put into your emails and then you could select the one that you want to link to. Okay, so I still have some text here that I don't really want. You know, I could get rid of this letter A and in fact I will. I just clicked on it and tap delete and I'll get rid of this insight consulting just by clicking on it and then tapping delete on the keyboard. Okay, now I'm ready to create my second slide. I'll click Add Slide, and you can see that there's a gallery of slide types that you can add. Here's one where it's a title and then some text. You've got a title and basically bullet points, a list of items. You've got a pretty much blank slide here. You've got a slide here with a title and then a picture. Just quite a variety of different slide types that you can add to your emails presentation. Notice that you can also import from PowerPoint. And uh, that's a good option if you have a lot of presentations that you've made in PowerPoint and you don't want to have to recreate them. Just import them. For this one, I'm just going to go with this slide type here. I'll click on it and it's added to my presentation. I can now just go in, triple click on the text, type in what I want, and then I can go down and triple click on the text down here. And I can type in the text that I want to be on that slide pretty simple. Next I want to show you how to add a slide and use images. To do that it's pretty simple, pretty similar to what I just showed. You click add slide. Now you could choose any of these slide types. I'm going to pick this one just because it comes preloaded with an image here that I can just remove and put my own image on top of. So I'll just click on that image and then I'll go up here to to the image button. I'll click on it and notice I can upload my own image from my computer just by clicking my and browse and browsing my computer selecting the image I want to upload but in this case I want to just search the web and I can do a quick search here for a person alright there's some different pictures that it found on the internet and I can select one and that picture is added to my presentation now I could just click on the image I want to delete delete it by tapping the delete key or the backspace key on the keyboard and now I can use these little handles in the corner to resize the image that I'd like to use. Now I forgot to change the text for this slide, so I'm going to click on that, highlight it, delete it, and I'll replace it. Let's take a quick look at what my presentation looks like so far. So I'm going to go back and click on my first slide, my title slide, and then I'll go here in the upper right, click play, and my emails presentation begins. It loads up on that first slide, when I'm ready to advance, I can just click here on this arrow to advance to the next slide. And you can see what a fun animation that is. What a nice, interesting, attention-getting uh, kind of presentation this is. The animation there of the hands pulling away and then coming back is just a, it's an eye grabber, definitely. And if you're careful, you can place the objects right on the hand or between the hands, whatever you want to do, so that it makes the most sense uh, for what you're showing. 
Okay, so that's my presentation so far. Now, when you're showing a presentation, you could also just press play, and this goes into basically kiosk mode or auto mode, and it will just advance automatically every few seconds without you having to advance the slides yourself. Okay, all right. Now, I could go full screen using this button here in the lower right corner. That's a good option. But for now, I'm done, and I want to click here on the edit button to get back to the emails editor. I want to add one more slide. So I'll go here in the upper left, click add slide. This one is just going to be blank pretty much. So I'll click on that blank option. Now notice it put it in the wrong place. I wanted this slide to be the fourth slide. Instead it was put as the second slide. Well that's easily fixed. Just click and drag, drop it down where I want it to be. And now on this fourth slide I want to show you in addition to image and text you can add other kinds of media. There's a list here of the different kinds of media. You can upload a mp4 or an mp3. You can embed certain items into your emails. There's flash content that you can put into your emails. Now some of this might be contingent on having an upgraded plan. Uh, you'll have to test that out. But for now I'll show you an example from YouTube. So I'm going to jump over here to this new tab and go to YouTube and I'm going to do a search for a noun is a person, place, or thing. It's a Schoolhouse Rock video that is apparently on YouTube and I'll just click on that. If I would like to use this in my presentation I can click on the URL just one click, it'll highlight, then I copy it, and then back in emails, I just paste in that URL. I decide the start time of the video and the stop time. I'm just going to leave it the default. It'll start at the beginning. I can also decide if I want to loop the video, autoplay the video. I'm going to go ahead and say autoplay, so it should just begin automatically when this slide opens. And now I'll just click add. There's the video, and I would like to move that around a little bit or, you know, resize it, and you can do some of that. All right, so that video shows up now inside my emails slide. Now remember, there's more than just YouTube videos. You can put in embed codes, you can put in web URLs, uh, you can browse and upload your own content to add things to emails. Notice that there's also shapes. There's some basic, common, simple shapes that you can click on and add to your emails presentations, and then just move things around. You can also add charts, and this is a little bit more complicated. You can see you could either import data, or you can just select on the type of chart that you would like to add, and then put in the headers, put in the content, and when you're done, you click Add, and the chart is added to your emails. Let's say I'm done now and I'm ready to present this or share it or send it to someone. All I have to do is make sure that it's saved. I click Save. It gives me a chance to establish the title of this presentation, so I'm going to fix that. Notice right now it's going to be a public presentation. If I want to make it private, I would need to upgrade to a higher version of emails. Okay, but for now I'll just click Save. Now if I had an upgraded version of emails, I would be able to download this as an MP4 video or as a PDF or some other options here, but I don't have an upgraded account in this case. Notice that there's a button there for sharing that I can click. It gives me several ways I can share this with other people. I could embed it on a website. I could link to it. I could just email it to people, post it to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, some of these other options. And next, you can see there's privacy options, but because this is not an upgraded account, I can't change the privacy. Now this last option, Collaborate, is pretty exciting you can do some collaboration and have multiple people working on the same document. Now notice what it says, simultaneous collaboration is not supported, so you wouldn't be able to work simultaneously on the project, but you could take turns editing and adding items to your emails projects. All right, when you're ready to present, like I showed before, just go back to that first slide, click play, and you're ready to go. Now, like I alluded to at the beginning of this presentation, you need to be aware that every time you create a new emails, it's going to be a slightly different experience. You'll click on create new presentation, you'll pick the template, and then you're editing that template. It's going to be a different experience each time because of how those templates are set up. Most of them are unique. Now, I do want to point out that you can emaisify your PowerPoint. I showed that you can import a PowerPoint into an emails. But right here from your emails account settings, you can just click emaisify your PowerPoint, click that, then you can select a PowerPoint file, upload it in, and it will transform it into an emails. 
Okay, so those are the basics and a little bit more of how to use emails. I would love to read your comments of what you think about emails if you want to send me some comments below. And I hope you enjoy using emails and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students.